Hey guys, and welcome to the table. As you can see, this is a new series called Eater or Not, where we'll be analysing specific players in depth to determine if they should be included in your round one team or not. Today, we'll be going over three value mid picks priced around the 600k mark, so let's get straight into it. First up, Big Christian Welsh. Priced at 638k or 44.6 points, a lot of people, even experienced players, see him a tad turned off of him. However, when taking a deep dive into his stats, it appears that Welsh may still present some value at his inflated price. Now, it should be noted before we look at Welsh that he is returning from serious injury, which may reduce his work rate in PPM, making this analysis less relevant. Now, personally, I'm going to be watching the Storm's preseason games to see how he looks, if he's looking fit, getting into work, or if he's seeming a bit sluggish. Now, although he's coming back from an Achilles injury, Welsh does have a couple of things going for him. Firstly, He's done this before, he's returned from two ACLs before and came back and has played at a high level. And so it's nothing new to him. Additionally, forwards typically suffer less than backs returning from lower body injuries. I think Carrigan last year came back from an ACL, made state of origin and made the Kangaroos side. They can do it, right? Um, finally, he's had a full year to return from this injury. There was talk last year that he might have returned for the back end of finals. But ultimately, the Storm said, no, we're going to give him an extra five months to recover. And so he should be strong and ready to go for round one. With that out of the way, let's look at his stats. In 2021, Christian Walsh averaged 45.1 points in the regular season, doing 41.33 units of base in 51.9 minutes per game. Not very impressive, right? Well, when starting at prop and playing more than 50 minutes a game, his assumed role this year, he averaged 50.3 points a game, with 44.27 units of base. But wait, it gets better. The score of 50.3 was without the tackle break and offload change that happened in 2022. And when accounting for this, his average shoots up to 53.7, assuming 2.3 versus 2.8 offloads per game were to the hand. In 2020, Walsh performed very similar under the same parameters, averaging 53.8, assuming 2.4 of his 2.9 offloads were to the hand, with a massive 49.31 units of carbohydrates. As you might notice, there's a five point differential in base between the two years, yet his averages were nearly identical. Well, that's because in 2021, although his base reduced, he reduced his missed tackles by 1.2, errors by 0.2, increased turnover tackles by 0.3, reduced penalties by 0.2. He also had a try, a line break, and two line break assists in those games compared to none in 2020. Another thing to consider is that 2021 was Villandy's ball, right? Good teams were making less tackles, right? You can see in 2020, Walsh made 35 tackles in 55 minutes, whereas in 2021, he only made 29.4. Storm being less dominant than they were in 2021, you should expect that number to go back up to about 32, 33, which immediately just adds even more value. All of this is to say is with his potential increased role as the Storm Pack's leader, Christian Walsh looks set to average at least 52 this season, potentially more if he can increase his base back to 2020 levels while maintaining the small but noticeable scoring gains of 2021. If he can do so, we could be looking at an average of 54 plus, maybe even 55. So he's a good option and he's definitely an eater. Next up, we have Tavita the Eater Pangai Jr. Pangai is priced at 593k of 41.5 points and has the mid-edge dual position. Shouldn't play Origin, buys round 13, 17, and 23. So first up, the role that we're actually going to be looking forward to Vita the Eater to play this year is a mix of time on the edge and in the middle for about 65 minutes total. If he's named in the middle come round one, don't worry about him. Get him out of your team. He's probably only going to play 50 minutes there and just not be relevant. So let's move to what we're hoping for. In 2022, when starting in the second row and playing for more than 50 minutes a game, he averaged 55.3 in 70 minutes for a 0.79 PPM. Additionally, in 2021, Pangai averaged roughly 59 when accounting for the new scoring changes in 80 minutes, giving him a PPM of 0 0.074. Although that seems good, it should be noted we aren't expecting TBJ to play 80 on the edge regularly. And so when looking at his back row games where he played more than 50 minutes but less than 70 minutes across his entire career, he averaged about roughly 51 when accounting for the new scoring changes. 
Notably, this was with an average of 58 minutes per game. So if we apply this PPM in this subset of games to a 65 minute average, we can project TPJ to average about mid 50s this season. All of this is to say, the numbers point to Tevita the year being a strong buy, and he should be included in your round one side, but he is Tevita. All could be going well for you in the first three rounds with him averaging mid 50s and you're happy, until he decides he's going to punch a bloke in round four and get suspended for six weeks. <laughs> Less flashy, but just as relevant is his fitness, right? Expecting Tevita to play 65 minutes every week could be seen as slightly optimistic. And if he plays the occasional 40 minute game like he did last year, you can see his value plummet from just cut price keeper gun to just to average pick who averages under 50. So I'm projecting him for a 52 average this season, which makes him an eater and a recommended pick in your round one team. But know the risks. If he blows up in preseason like he did last year, I'm not going to be selecting him, and I don't think you should too. The last player we're going to be going over in this video is Adam Eater Elliott. Priced at 606k or 42.3 points and moving to the Knights and escaping Ricky Stewart, we hope that Elliot can finally find himself in a secure role to perform his best. Off the bat, things look good for Elliot. Last year, when playing 50 minutes at lock or more, he averaged 53.6 and 59.2 minutes for a 0.91 ppm. If he could replicate that exactly at the Knights, he would present 11 points of value as a non-origin keeper. Sign me up. But is that actually a reasonable expectation? With Man taking up a large chunk of minutes on the bench, projecting Elliot to average more around 55 minutes is most likely more accurate. And you can see in games played under 60 minutes, even whilst maintaining his PPM, his scores dropped to 49.2. Worse for Elliot, when you look at games under these parameters across his entire career, his PPM drops to 0.83, which if you extrapolate that to 55 minutes per game would only yield him 45.65 points a game for three points of value. So if we take a positive approach and project him for a PPM in the middle of those, say 0.87, that would bump his average up to 47.85 in 55 minutes, but he'd need 60 minutes to have 10 points of value. So what's the conclusion of Adam Elliott? Well, he's a non-origin gun in a side that will probably be doing a lot of tackling, so an average of high 40s is definitely on the table. Unfortunately, that's not quite enough to have him as a keeper, nor does that present enough value to have him as a cashy. An optimistic view would be to hold him through Origin for high 40 scoring and then upgrade him afterwards, but with the value in the mids this year, I don't think that's an optimal strategy. So I'm going to be classing him as non-neater and would not recommend you start with him in your side come round one this season. And that does it for today's video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment or join the Discord in the description. Have fun and continue eating.